Hello and welcome to the Daily Vigil Bible. I'm Obi Yates. You know, as I read through the book of Joshua, I am reminded that once there was a time when people were willing to fight and die for what they believed to be the Word of God. And we seem to live in an era where the Word of God is overlooked, silenced or mocked because it does not fit into what the society around us accepts. What do we as Christians in the Western world tend to do? Sit in silence and pray that those who mock God will come to know Him. How can they? Unless we speak the true word of God. Joshua chapter 10. Let's open God's word of prayer. Lord, I ask as I read your word that you reveal something new to me. I also ask that as people hear your word, they come to a better understanding of you. Amen. Now when Adonai, Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard about how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and now the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, they were very afraid, because Gibeon was a great city. As one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than I, and all its men were mighty. Therefore Adonai Zedak, king of Jerusalem, said to Hoham, king of Ebron, Piram, king of Jarmuth, Japheth, king of Lashki, and Eber, king of Eglon, saying, Come unto me, and help me, let us strike Gibeon, for they have made peace with Joshua, and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Ebron, the king of Jarmoth, the king of Lachshi, and the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together, and went up, they and all their armies, and camped against Gibeon, made war against it. The men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gagal, saying, Don't abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country have gathered together against us. So Joshua went out from Gagal, he and the whole army with him, including all the mighty men of valour. He always said to Joshua, Don't fear them, for I have delivered them into your hands. Not a man of them will stand before you. Joshua therefore came to them suddenly. He marched from Gagal all night. He always confused them before Israel. He killed them with great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them by the way of the ascent of Bath Aram, and struck them to Azikar. And to Machadar. As they fled from before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Haran, Yahweh hurled down great stones from the sky on them to Asikar, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstone than those whom the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to Yahweh. In the day when Yahweh delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, he said in the sight of Israel, He said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still on Gibeon. You, moon, stop in the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Isn't this written in the book of Joshua? The sun stayed in the middle of the sky, and they didn't saw it go down about a whole day. There was no day like that before it or after it, that Yahweh listened to the voice of a man, for Yahweh fought for Israel. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp of Gal. These five kings fled, and hid themselves in the cave at Machadar. Joshua was told, saying, The five kings have been found, hidden in the cave at Machadar. Joshua said, There were large stones to cover the cave's entrance. Set men by it to guard them, but don't stay there. Pursue your enemies, and then sack them from the rear. Don't allow them to enter into their cities. For Yahweh your God has delivered them into your hand. When Joshua and the children of Israel had finished killing them, were very great slaughter until they were consumed, and the remnant which remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, all the people returned to the camp to Joshua at Machadah in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the cave entrance, and bring those five kings out of the cave to me. They did so, and brought those five kings out of the cave to him, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Ebron, the king of Jarmoth, the king of Lesher, and the king of Eglon. When they brought those kings out to Joshua, Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said to the chiefs, the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. They came near, and put their feet on their necks. Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid. Nor be dismayed, be strong and courageous, 
For Yahweh will do this to all your enemies against whom you fight. Afterward Joshua struck them, put them to death, and hanged them on five trees. They were hanging on the trees until the evening. At the time of the going down of the sun, Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees, and threw them into the cave in which they had hidden themselves, and laid great stones in the mouth of the cave, which remain to this very day. Joshua took Machadon that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, where his king he utterly destroyed it, and all the souls who were in it. He left no one remaining. He did to the king of Machadar, as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Machadar, and all Israel with him, to Libna, and fought against Libna. Yahweh delivered Ozo with its king into the hand of Israel. He struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were in it, he left no one remaining in it. He did this to its king, as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Libna, and all Israel went with him, to Laskish, and camped against it, and fought against it. Yahweh delivered Laskish into the hand of Israel. He took it on the second day, and struck it with the edge of the sword. All the souls were in it, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horem, king of Gerza, came up to help Laskish, and Joshua struck him and his people until he had left them no one remaining. Joshua passed from Laska, and all Israel with him, to Eglon, and he camped against it, and fought against it. They took it on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword. He utterly destroyed all the souls who were in it that day, according to all that he had done to Laskish. Joshua went up for Eglon, and all Israel with him, to Eglon, and he fought against it. They took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, with his king and all its cities, and all the souls who were in it, left no one remaining, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but he utterly destroyed it, on all the souls who were in it. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him to Debna, and fought against it. He took it, with his king and all its cities. He struck them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the souls who were in it. He left no one remaining. As he had done to Eglon, so he did to Deba, and to its king, and as he had done also to Libna, and to its king. So Joshua struck all the land, the hill country, the south, the lowland, the slopes, and all the kings. He left no one remaining, but he utterly destroyed all that breathed, as Yahweh the God of Israel commanded. Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea into Gaza, and all the country of Goshen into Gibeon. Joshua took all these kings and their land at one time, because Yahweh the God of Israel fought for Israel. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp, to Gigal.